Hello, all you wonderful internet people out there. Kevin from CC Pipe here once again, where we focus on productivity and pipeline for creatives. Today, I am following up on the last tutorial about preflights in InDesign, and now we'll take a look at preflights in Acrobat. I discussed preflights in general more in part one, so if you're not familiar with them, perhaps jump over there first. The main difference with Acrobat concerning preflights is, of course, that it is not live like in InDesign, and you use it for PDFs but instead it is both powerful and versatile. For me, Acrobat preflights are most useful for checking incoming material, making sure that it is all correct when you have not made it yourself. But of course, preflights can be useful for you regardless before sending things to print. It is easy to make like small errors, leaving spot colors, wrong color profiles, etc. But now it's time to go over to Acrobat. Here we have Acrobat. I have an example PDF here and to open the preflight panel, we press Control Shift X. Now, there is quite a lot in here and I'm not going to pretend I know all of it, but I think the basics are quite straightforward. We choose a preflight from the list and uh, just select it and then press analyze and it will give us the result. Then we get this quite detailed report over here and under overview, we have general information like sizes, color profiles, etc. that might be useful for us. Sometimes you kind of have to search for what you're looking for here. Then above the overview, we have any potential warnings or errors detected by the profile. That's all well and good, but how about making a custom profile then? So here it gets a bit deeper. We could either edit an existing profile by choosing edit, not too surprisingly. To make our own profile, we go to options and then create profile. Just as in part one, I don't think it's worth for me to go through it all, but let's look at how it works. To the left, we have our presets and under each we will have the subcategories and under each we can set up pre-made warnings and errors. As default, they will be inactive and if you want to use one, we can choose what type of a problem it is. Error, warning or just as info. Also, I find this can feel a bit backwards sometimes, so a tip would be to read it out loud. For example, here, it is an error if the PDF document uses a feature that requires at least Acrobat 5.0. So let's set some up. We want to warn if images are low res and uh, lower than 240 dpi would not be ideal. So let's set that up. We can set it as a warning and uh, then just write in some numbers. Next, uh, number two, we can't print spot colors and therefore we need to say that that's an error and that we do over here and uh, we can set it to be an error and uh, by saying that zero are allowed. We want to use the PDFX standards and uh, maybe you've heard of these. They can be set when exporting from example from InDesign and we want PDFX4 and if it isn't, that will be an error. The last one I wanted to show you is the custom checks and uh, this is where we can get specific. So let's go over there. On the right here, we have this huge list of custom checks and to the left, the ones currently added to our preflight. And if you want to use one, we simply select it and press the arrow here to move it over. And here we can take it away again if we so choose. Since there are so many options, the search here is quite useful. For example, if we want something to do with text, we can write that in and narrow it down a bit. If we still can't find quite what we want here, we can go even further and build a new one or customize an existing one. Defaults are locked, but we, if we make a copy of it with this button over here, we can then edit that one. So why not do that? Okay, so what do we do here? Well, I don't want text to be smaller than seven points. And if we search for text, which we have already done, so we can see that there is one for text smaller than five points. That's almost what we want, but we can use it. First, select it and uh, press here to copy it. And now we get yet another dialog. And in this case though, we only really need to rename it to 7PT instead and uh, change the description as well. Now we just need to change the value to 7PT instead of five over here. If we wanted to make one from scratch or add more things, since you can use more than one of these from the list, you would add them from here. And uh, I'm not super used to working with these, so I will call it here. But at least you will know that the possibility is there. And as you could see, the list of items is very long. When we are done, we just press OK and uh, OK yet again. And uh, remember to do that, otherwise it won't save it. 
Now we should be able to find it in the list and uh, let's just try and run it. Press analyze and it finds a lot of errors because I hadn't exported it correctly. But at least this way I can now move on to fixing it before it being time for printing and it having to cost me money and extra time. And that's all I had for preflights. Hope I managed to give you a sense of what they can be used for. And uh, once again, if you haven't watched part one, it will be on screen in a second. Thank you so much for watching and uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. It helps me out a lot. And also if you have any productivity questions or suggestions for future videos, make sure to throw those in the comments below. Once again, thank you and until next time, have a good one.